What's up guys? I'm Taylor Thrasher. I'm a fitness and nutrition coach. I've worked with over 350 clients and helped them change their lives and lifestyles through the way that they eat, the way that they train, and the way that they live. Today we're gonna to talk about macros. The big old macros. We're gonna talk about what they are, why they're important, and kind of get into the weeds and hopefully make them less confusing because I know that they can be a confusing subject. If you want your macros calculated, hit the link in the description. I'll calculate them for free and get you started on your weight loss or muscle gain journey. Number one, what are macros? Macros are just nutrients. They're in everything that we eat. There's micronutrients and macronutrients. Macro meaning big, micro meaning small. Micronutrients are measured in milligrams or micrograms. They're small, that's how they're measured. It's like uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, fiber, things like that. Those are your micronutrients. You're gonna get a lot of those from fruits and vegetables. You're gonna get them, you're gonna get them from meat and milk and everything else. But as far as macronutrients go, the big nutrients, those are what make up our daily calories. There's three, protein, carbohydrates, and fat and our daily calorie intake is made up of macros. Now the reason that they are so important versus just tracking calories is because of this. I could tell you, hey, you wanna lose weight, do a couple numbers in my head, okay? You need to eat 2,000 calories a day to lose weight. You could eat 2,000 calories a day of whatever you want to, and if you stick to it, you're going to lose weight, period. It's that simple. That's how simple weight loss is. You eat the amount of calories that you need to eat, you're done. However, you wanna bring up the professor that did the study on eating you know, however many calories a day of Twinkies and still losing weight, or do you wanna bring up people that live pre predominantly on Starbucks and junk food that are ghastly skinny? We could do that. It's because that's a matter of calories, not macros. If you start looking at macros and you eat 2,000 calories a day, in the proper proportion of protein, carbohydrates, and fats, and keep all of those food sources from whole nutritious foods, you're gonna be a lot better off because calories only determine body weight. That's all they do. Macros determine how you look. They determine your physique. If you're somebody that wants to lose weight the right way, you wanna lose weight sustainably, you want to build or maintain muscle while you're losing that weight, then pay attention because macros are for you. You have to make sure you're getting an adequate amount of protein. Protein ultimately is a chain of amino acids that are the building blocks of life. Every cell in the human body contains protein. You need protein to regenerate your cells. You need protein to control your blood pressure. You need it to control the, the pH in your body. It regulates your cells and your hormones. Protein is super important. You have to make sure that you're getting enough protein every day. It's also going to help you maintain and repair the muscle mass that you currently have. So in the previous example, if you're not eating enough protein every day, you could be losing weight. But a lot of that weight could be from your body cannibalizing your muscle mass. And so you're not necessarily losing good weight. You always wanna maintain as much muscle as possible just for general health and wellness, but also if you wanna be, you know, hmm, if you wanna be something, <laughs> you gotta have that muscle. Next, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are super important because they ultimately break down into glucose, which is blood sugar, which is the main source of energy for your body's tissues, cells, organs, things like that. The other reason that carbohydrates are important macronutrient wise is because if you wanna have big, full muscles, you need a lot of water in your muscle. The body is like 70% water. The muscle is like 70% water. Carbohydrate, means that when you eat carbs, your body holds on to water, hydrate, right, H2O. I think for every gram of carbohydrate, and I could be wrong, your body holds on to two molecules of water. So you eat a lot of carbs, your body holds on to a lot of water. So if you're eating in the right proper macronutrient ratio, if you're training every day and your body is producing muscle glycogen, your body is going to store those carbohydrates and store that glycogen and store that water inside of your muscles, which are gonna give your muscles the big full round look. You're also gonna get a better pump in the gym. Carbohydrates, very important. That's why if you've ever been on a low carb diet, you looked flat, your muscles didn't pop, they weren't round, your pumps in the gym weren't as good. Carbohydrates are super important. Fats, fats are super important for hormone regulation, 
Our body uses fats to help absorb fat-soluble vitamins and minerals. Fats also make food taste good and they make us feel more full. We need a certain amount of dietary fats in our diet, 100%, but I see a lot of people, especially in today's world, get way too overboard on the fats without even realizing it and it puts them in trouble. Eating too much fat can be harmful because it has so many calories per gram. So per one gram of protein, you have four calories. Per one gram of carbohydrate, you have four calories. Per one gram of fat, you have nine calories. And it's usually in the form of an oil, some type of deep fried food, um, nuts, peanut butter, butter, avocado, cheese, things like that all have a ton of fat, therefore a ton of calories, but they're not super, there's not a lot of volume. So you don't really feel full. If you put two tablespoons of olive oil on your meal, it could be a couple hundred calories, but you're not even gonna hardly know that it's there unless you can taste it. If you're cooking, let's say you're cooking eggs in the morning and you put a big old pat of butter, that could be 200 calories of butter and all you're gonna say is, mmm, these eggs taste better. It's not like eating a big bowl of rice or a big bowl of meat or something like that, which is gonna make you feel full because you've got the food volume and you realize that you ate all, you've ate all that food. Um, it's so fat can put a lot of calories into your diet if you're not paying attention to it. I think that's part of the reason we have the obesity epidemic that we have in America right now, because a lot of people are really about these packaged processed foods that are high in all the, the nasty fats to the trans fats, like the bad fats. Um, but I mean, fat is in everything. There's sauces, chips, snacks, bars, everything I feel like that you eat is has a high fat content. And then to take it a step further, they'll pair it with sugar which makes it taste amazing, or they'll pair it with salt, which makes it taste amazing. That's why, you know, potato chips or fried chicken or what have you, those are great because it's something fatty that's connected with salt. And then if you eat something like, um, like a cookie or a cake, then you've got fat from the butter, you've got the sugar, and you've got the salt, which makes the, flav the flavor combination is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but as far as what it does for your body, not so good. That's why generally, for myself and for my clients, I try to keep the protein high, the carbohydrates moderate, and then I keep the fat relatively low, especially <laughs> especially if I know that somebody's maybe not being honest with me about what they're eating. The fat can get out of hand quickly. So I'm not here to demonize any certain types of foods. I'm just saying, if you wanna eat a lot of rice, maybe you're a bodybuilder, you're trying to be a bodybuilder, a power lifter, and you're eating a lot of meat, and you're eating a lot of rice, Maybe don't put that avocado or don't put the peanut butter in your shake because you're already getting a lot of calories and you're already getting a lot of energy from these protein and carbs. Maybe you don't need all the fat. Or if you're somebody that wants to shred down and lose a bunch of weight really quick, then keep your carbs low because that's what's gonna hold on to all that water and just allow your body to only process fat. So it's gonna process the dietary fat for energy and then when it runs out of that, it's more than likely gonna completely go for your body fat stores if you're keeping your protein high enough. Otherwise, if your protein's not high enough, it's gonna cannibalize your muscle mass, which we don't want. My main sources of macronutrients are going to be as follows. For protein, it's predominantly beef, chicken, Greek yogurt, whey protein powder, fish, shrimp. I'll also eat eggs. What else has protein in it? We'll keep it at that. Those are the main things that I eat anyways. If you guys follow me on Instagram or if you followed me on YouTube for a while, you know it's pretty much beef, chicken, whey, and Greek yogurt. And then occasionally we'll throw in the shrimp, we'll throw in the fish, not quite as often, but we'll eat those. Carbohydrates are going, the good carbohydrates that you'll see me eating most often are gonna be white rice, duh, oats, fruit. I love, I love dates, bananas, mangoes, watermelons, peaches, apples, love them. The less good carbohydrates are gonna be bread, cereals, muffins, things of that nature. But then if you start getting into muffins and baked goods, even breads or croissants, then you've gotta start looking at the fat content too because you know, people will look at a cupcake and say, oh, it's carbohydrates. It's carbohydrates from flour and sugar, but there's also like two sticks of butter in there, so be careful. And then dietary fat, you're gonna have your olive oils, coconut oil, butter, ghee, 
beef tallow, avocado, peanut butter, nuts, any, any type of nut or nut butter is gonna have a lot of fat in it. And like I said, I'm not here to demonize anything, but you will hear me say things like, oh, cook with a dry pan, I'm not putting butter when I cook my eggs, or I didn't get peanut butter in my shake, things like that. The reason I'm doing that is because generally I keep my protein high and I keep my carbohydrates pretty high, so I'm choosing that energy source to get more of. If I was to eat a lot of rice and a lot of avocado, then I must be on bulk mode or something because I'm gonna be getting a lot of calories, which isn't always necessary. Something that got me in trouble for a long time. I, I wanted to be big, I wanted to be a big bodybuilder guy and crack the sidewalk when I walked down the street. Part of the problem was when I was attempting to get big, 250 pounds at six foot was as big as I ever got. I was force feeding like five or 6,000 calories but what I was doing is I was eating a lot of protein, yes. I was eating a lot of carbs, yes. But I was also having a baked potato cooked in butter. I was having a six egg omelet, so lots of fat in the eggs, with cheese cooked in butter, topped with sour cream for breakfast. I also had a bowl of oats with peanut butter and jelly. I had full fat ground beef, 88-12, I didn't drain it, and so there was a lot of liquid fat on there. Um, we would eat steaks for dinner, I would put peanut butter in my shakes. I was eating so many calories, which is great. It's what I should have been doing, but I should have kept my dietary fat a lot lower and just let my body go after carbs because those carbohydrates would have been a lot more easily burned off during weight training and hopefully would have gone more to my muscles. But instead, a lot of those calories were coming from fat and carbs, which gave my body no choice but to store some of it right here <laughs> and right here. It's just one of those things. Like you don't really realize how many extra calories you're getting unless you're tracking, obviously, but like I said, if you're just putting butter in the pan, you're putting a little sour cream, you're doing some olive oil, those three things I listed could add six or 800 calories to your day before you even realized it. Anyways, guys, I hope that cleared up some confusion about macros, what they are, proteins, carbs, and fats, why they're important, because if you're not getting enough or you're getting too much of a certain one, it doesn't matter the calories that you're eating. Yes, you might be losing weight, but your body composition is not going to be what you want it to be. I'm Taylor Thrasher, stick around for the next one. Take it easy.